Hi, welcome back to my channel, Mr. Talbot Maths, and today I'm going to be going through a video on differentiation and specifically focusing on how to check algebraic differentiation on the Casio CG50 calculator. It is something which I was not aware of until very recently, but it's going to be something that is very, very useful to um, anybody who is studying A level in terms of checking your differentiation and making sure that what you've done is correct. Now, how do you differentiate? I'm going to be going through that. So if you're not uh, doing the A-level course currently, if you don't have the Casio CG50, but you're interested in differentiation, I will go through that at a very straightforward level. So to do with polynomials only, rather than anything else like sine cos, any other trig functions, anything else that is more complicated. It's going to be a very straightforward example of differentiation. The gradient function, what is that? Well, that's what we're going to be plotting and actually the gradient function is just the differential or the differentiate the function that's been differentiated then plotted graphed if you like okay that's referred to as the gradient function why because your differential finds the gradient of any well the, the gradient of the function you differentiated at a specific point okay so if i differentiate something and then substitute in a value for x that will tell me the gradient of the original function at that value of x. Okay, um, it is impossible to check algebraic differ differentiation. That's what I've been told, that's what you might have heard um, about the calculator. It cannot work out algebraic differentiation. And that is true to a certain extent, it cannot calculate algebraic differentiation. But what I'm going to show you today is that it can calculate numerical differentiation at every value, every point, at least on your screen, and plot it. And that will then give you a curve. And then instead of just working out a value or working out um, the gradient at one point, it's going to work out the gradient at every point, which is far more useful. Okay, so without further ado, let's get into it. Right, so as I said before, I'm going to go through some straightforward differentiation, I'm going to differentiate this equation here, this function. Okay. Now the first thing I want to do is write this in index form. So let's do that. I'm going to get y is equal to 3x to the power of a half. And then I'm going to get plus 1 fifth x to the power of negative 1. And then I've still got the plus 7. Right. Now I'm going to differentiate this, so I'm going to work out dy by dx, that is how we, well that's the notation for differentiation, that's differentiate y with respect to x. Okay, what I'm now going to do to differentiate this, I'm going to multiply by my power, so I'm going to do 3 multiplied by a half, which gives me 3 halves, or 3 over 2 x to the power of, now you take away 1 from your power, so minus a half. Now the next bit is 1 fifth times negative 1, which would give me minus 1 fifth x to the power of negative 2. And if I differentiate a numerical term, a purely numerical term, I'm going to get 0, so that plus 7 will disappear. The next part here is working out the second differential. And how do you do that? Well, you differentiate your first differential. So d squared y over dx squared. Okay, the second differential of y with respect to x. Okay, we do the same process. 3 over 2 times by minus a half is going to give me minus 3 over 4 x Take away 1 from my power is going to give me minus 3 over 2. Now I've got minus 1 fifth times minus 2. That's going to give me plus 2 fifths x to the negative 3. So there are both my differentials. First differential and the second differential. And that's a very straightforward, um, basic example of differentiation with regards to polynomials. You bring your power down to the front, and if you've got another, if you've got coefficient there, you're going to multiply those two, and then you're going to take one away from your original power. Right, 
Now, the bit which most of the people watching this are probably interested in it is how do we use the calculator to check that these differentials are correct. Okay, now the first thing you want to do is go into the graph function. Okay, so I'm going to go down to graph, press execute. From there, what I'm going to do is I'm going to type in my original function. I'm, I, I want to show you that there's no trickery here, there's no sorcery. I want you to type in the original function, not the one in index form. So I'm going to type in 3, and then I'm going to type in shift and then x squared to give me the square root. And x, press right to get out of my square root symbol, plus, and then fraction 1 over 5x, and then press right again, plus 7. That's my original function. Execute. Now for y2, my second function, what I'm going to do is I'm going to press options, and it will come up with these list of options here. Now if you don't already know this, pressing the button underneath will um, select the option just above it. So if I press F2, I'm going to get calculate, and then I can calculate the differential, the second differential, the integral, and log of AB. Now what I want to do, I want to do the first differential, so I'm going to press F1, and I get this notation here. Now I could retype in all of this, but I don't really want to do that, so I'm going to press exit twice, and this is what you have originally before I press the option button. I'm going to press F1, so I get this bold Y. Now what you don't want to do is select the Y using your button, using alpha and then the minus or the subtract button, because that will give you whatever value you have saved as Y on your calculator, so you don't want to do that. You want to make sure you're using this bold Y at the top here, and then we want Y1. So you want to put in a 1 after that. Now, the next bit is a little bit confusing unless you've been told, so it's not particularly intuitive, but we want to, and you probably think that you wouldn't be able to do this, but you can. We want when X is equal to X, and then it will evaluate the differential at every individual value of X. Okay. Now, it will do that based on your screen, um, so that, you know, if you have got, if you zoom in, you're going to have smaller and smaller values on your x-axis, and so the calculator is not working forever to work out every 0 0.001, you know, uh, value of this differentiated function, or this function when it's been differentiated. So, I, I strongly suspect that's what it's going to be doing, because otherwise, like I said, it would take forever. Uh, so we're going to do that. Now, we want to check our differentiated function. At the moment, this will just plot the differentiated function, which is not going to be particularly useful for us because it can't tell us uh, the equation of that. But that's fine because we know how to differentiate. So we're going to type in what we believe to be the differentiated function. So 3 over 2, x to the power of minus 1, minus 1 fifth, x to the power of negative 2. Okay, execute. So we've got what is the differentiated function, and the calculator will plot that, and then we've got what we believe to be the differentiated function, and it will also plot that. And as long as those two are the same, then we can be very, very, very confident that we have done this correctly. Okay, now what I am going to do is I'm going to unselect the first one. The reason I'm doing that is because I don't want there to be any confusion when we've plotted these. So unselect that first one. I've got my differentiated. Um, function selected and what I believe to be a differentiate function selected. Press execute, it will plot both of them. Okay, and that's gone slightly wrong there. Why? What have I done wrong here? Um, well, if I have a look, I've put negative one in there. Okay, so that was just an example of how you're going to know that it's not quite right. So if I go back here and put that as negative a half, now it should be right. But you could see how very different they were. Okay, press execute. Now they're exactly the same. I missed off the minus a half, okay, on purpose, just to show you that it wasn't going to be exactly the same. Now it is. And so if I zoom in, I can check this. So you can zoom in as much or as little as you want to, to feel confident that these are the same thing, that these are the same function, that what you've done is correct. At this point, I'm very certain I've done this right. 
okay and that's one method of checking it now I'm going to do exactly the same thing um, for the second differential so I'm going to just delete these two again so to avoid any confusion about the graphs and I'm going to press right again I'm going to do options calculate second differential and then I'm going to press exit exit y1 because my function is in the y1 section and then x is equal to x execute and I'm going to type in without making any mistakes this time minus three quarters and then so on I'm going to type in my second differential function minus three quarters x to the power of um, minus fraction button three over two plus two fifths x to the negative three And I haven't made, intentionally made a mistake here on this one. So if it doesn't look the same, then it is actually a mistake. And it could be a mistake of what I've done rather than typing it into the calculator. So, you know, you do try and check that as well. Have you typed it into the calculator the same or is it actually a mistake with this? OK, right. I want to make sure my first or my original function is not selected again. Good. And we can see that because the, the equals isn't highlighted. Whereas on these other two, the equals is highlighted. OK, let's execute. Now, I can kind of see a little bit there, but I want to zoom it out so actually I can see more of this function. Zoom out again, and you could press zoom auto, although sometimes it does go um, very far out and actually just make the function look a bit awkward and a lot different to maybe the way you would expect to sketch it. So do be careful of that, the zoom auto function. But we can see here it is plotted very, very similarly. So I'm feeling very confident at this point. I'm going to continue to zoom in it looks exactly the same. So I'm now as close to 100% confident that I possibly can be that that is the right algebraic differentiation. Okay, I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope you've learned something from the video if you have watched it all the way through to now, either about differentiation or about how to check the algebraic differentiation on your Casio CG50 calculator. Okay. If you have, please like, please subscribe. It helps me know that this video is useful, that you've enjoyed it. And also there'll be more videos with the Casio calculator coming in the future. And also more videos coming generally on topics that people want me to have a look at, want me to explain and show them how to do. And if, you, if there is anything that you want me to go through like that, please put it in the comments and I'll make sure that I do. Without further ado, um, I'm signing out and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.